They re- uh, this brand reached out to me. It's a clothing brand, like gym clothing brand. Okay. And the name of the of the brand is Meat, <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> which is all right. I'm already like, wh- why is your? Is it an acronym? I it could. Be. I mean, <laughs> either way, like regardless of like whether it's an acronym or not, like Meat is yeah, not. No. The thing was like that was bad enough, but like put it on. Look at their apparel, and it's like right on your shirt, big letters, Meat. meat. Okay, well, welcome back. We're doing another episode. And uh, like I said last time, if, if one single person liked the podcast, which is a very low threshold, uh, that we would do another one. So and at this point, it's kind of just, just an excuse to interview my friends and the people I like. So so fun, man. So here we are. And we have a special guest. It feels weird saying that. Because <laughs> uh, he's, my, he's my brother-in-law. He's... He's a pastor of our church. I met you. You shouldn't say that too quickly, though, because some people may check out already. They're like, he's a pastor. It's not going to be fun. Turn it It won't off. be funny. He doesn't have a <laughs> sense of humor because he's a pastor. Um, yeah, I mean, we I've known you for a long time, like before I even met my, my wife. So That's right. So my wife, Katie, who was on last episode, is your wife's sister. It's true, this, though. This is, this is Lyle Phillips. This is my brother-in-law. And our pastor, <laughs> the pastor of the church that we go to, you've been, I, I'd like to hear more about your, like just your fitness experience. Cause I know of course that you've done marathon training, which is yep. crazy. You also did like sort of bodybuilding style mm-hmm. um, training a couple years ago. Like, yep. I think that was during COVID or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you were shredded. shredded I mean, you, you were, you, I don't know what your body fat was, but you were absolutely shredded. And I remember you sent me that photo and I was like, dang, he's getting more shred than I am. And I was like, I cannot let this happen. Like, it was, I was like, I have to. I think I that was to. the photo, though, I sent you from the hotel room bathroom. And um, I had just had a dental surgery. Oh, really? And so I hadn't eaten for like 48 <laughs> hours. So you're like really lean. So I was really and then, shredded. And then you didn't eat anything. No, days. I couldn't. Because yeah. all I could have was like a smoothie. And so for like 48 hours, my calorie intake had been like severely low. Yeah. And so I was looking good. Looking real good. <laughs> and the lighting in that bathroom was like perfect. Right, right. Yeah, the that's abs. the thing, right? Like yeah. the, it's the lighting, right? Lighting helps. People don't understand. Yep. Like w- you look at the photos on my Instagram. Every single one of them is like the lighting is fire. Most mm-hmm. of the time it's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, the camera obviously is good. I have a pump obviously because I'm at the gym. You know, I've taken a bunch of salt sodium in my body and I'm like <laughs> trying to get the biggest pump I can. Um, and then, yeah, you you couple that with like some some very subtle edits mm-hmm. and it's like I mean, you look you, amazing yeah and there's this i don't know if you know about this but there's like the there's like the scandal right now i don't even know if you could call it a scandal i guess because i don't think anything's gonna happen but i haven't uh, heard about it so they're like a bunch of fitness influencers who like got caught photoshopping and i'm not oh, no. not just like i'm gonna put some edits on it you know let me just adjust the lighting like make it look good but it's like you could see like the doorway behind him is like all wavy. Oh it's no! Like, see, that's why people come up with unrealistic expectations exactly, exactly. of what it's going to look like when they work out, exactly. and they have no clue what it takes to actually achieve um, your physique, much less a physique that's been photoshopped, which is exactly. impossible. But people believe that that's possible. I know. And uh, you know, you're mentioning, hey, tell me a little bit about your fitness journey, and that's what I thought in the beginning. Um, to be honest. I first ran into CrossFit uh, back in like 17, 16 maybe. And uh, I thought, wow, you mean I can do CrossFit and look like those guys competing in the games? They are jacked. They They look amazing. Rich Froning, back when he was the fittest man in the world. And so I remember staying up late in my bed on my laptop watching these CrossFit wads, right? Like the workout of the day. And then I immediately went and joined a CrossFit box. And I remember the first day I was in there, I said you mean to tell me your workout of the day is only six minutes long? And they were like, yep, that's it. And I said, how is anybody going to achieve their goals working out for six minutes? And they were like, well, that's enough. That's the workout of the day. So I thought, well, great. All I have to do is work out for six minutes, five days a week, and I'll be shredded. I'll be shredded. (laughs) Yeah, it's an absolute fabrication of what's possible. And most people don't realize that. Yeah, exactly. Whatever it is, you're going to get shredded. There's always something trend, trending, and it's always different because, like, people want something new. Mm-hmm. Because 
they'll try something and then give up and it doesn't work. And so they need the yep. next new thing. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And your wife mentioned insanity. Yep. Uh, my wife and I did it together. That was the very first thing that I did post marriage. Uh, I mean, complete, completely detrained. Detrain actually wouldn't even be in this category. I mean, it was bad, bad, bro. Like for yeah. a year and a half, all we did was order takeout, uh, lay in bed, have sex, watch yeah. Netflix. That was it. That was like the first year of our marriage. Just our church was so food. small. That was yeah. it. Chinese takeout constantly. Yeah. And I remember looking at myself in the mirror. This would have been in uh, 13 or 14 maybe. And I was like, I look terrible. You look like, like Thor. Oh, you got to beep that out. Because uh, I'm right. like, you know, hey, this looks bad, bad. And yeah. I told Allison, we were up at my parents' house in Kentucky. And I was like, we need to start doing something sooner than later. And, yeah. well, my parents had the Insanity DVDs. Oh, so yeah. So I said, let's start today. The DVDs. Yeah, the DVDs. Oh, God, and we started that DVD. day. Yeah. Did never missed a day. We finished 60 days, completed That's the program. That's so impressive, though, that you were so, like, dedicated to that. Well, one of my friends told me 30 days in that only 7% of the people complete the program. And that was all the motivation motivated I needed. motivated you. I said, I'm yeah. finishing this. It's funny because I feel like our personalities are kind of similar in that. Yes. Like, when you are interested in something like a topic or, you know, like in this case, you know, working out, mm -hmm. you're going to do a ton of research about it. You're going to mm -hmm. figure out what, like who's, who's the best doing this thing right now. And, and then just suck it all up like a sponge. And then you're like fully in it. Yes. And you, you, you give it everything <laughs> that you have and it's yes. like, gets all of your attention. And, uh, I think that's amazing that we, you we talk that. about stuff like that constantly. Yeah. It seems like if we both get into something, whether it's, bodybuilding or fashion or whatever it's yeah. like we just talk about it i don't yeah. think we talked any more than when we were both oh doing no bodybuilding. Oh, we were texting each other <laughs> three times a day <laughs> At least. talking about meals body yes. fat percentage you know yes. like greg Doucette, who's calling yes. out who on the on the natty or not yes uh, you know? yes bro what are you gonna do if coach greg here's the ever thing comes it's funny that your stuff i'm so glad this came up because it is a dream of mine to to like be called out by coach greg it would be amazing. It would be, I, I love Coach Greg so much. And it yeah, would be, he's the best. Uh, man, I would feel so honored, like if he would call me out, you know, or, or like just that he would review. accuse you. Yeah, regardless. Being on the gear. Yeah, well, here's here's the thing. I think I have to come clean on something. Okay. And I think I should do it now. Okay. Before, before the Coach oh boy. Greg. Before I don't the know Coach what this Greg is going to be. Uh, <laughs> so when I, I, and I mentioned this on a, on a Q&A before, but mm. so when I graduated college, so I played college football and we couldn't take, I mean, there's like, you know, you can't even take like pre-workout. There's like, banned substances in like right. nearly everything like at GNC. So we couldn't just like wow. go to GNC and like get pre-workout. Okay. But we had to be in like insane shape year round. And it's like, this is hard to do. Mm. Like it's really hard. And now supplements don't help that much, right? They, sure. they probably yeah. help. But to me at that time, I'm like, they're everything, right? Oh yeah. Protein. It's going to change my life. Exactly. Just a scoop a day. Exactly. One scoop a day, 30 extra grams, changed my life. Unbelievable. Exactly. And then, so when I graduated from college, um, I was like, I'm free. Yeah, No one's yeah, drug yeah. testing me. I'm free. <laughs> I'm finally about to just, I'm going to get huge. You know? Yeah. And so I don't know, like I was looking at forums or, or something and I ordered something online that was mm. like, I think it was like an oral testosterone okay, thing. Okay. And I knew I had read like, oh, you got to do, like, you got to do something to protect your liver. But I didn't know about like, you know, when you come off testosterone, you can't just come off it. Right, because then your estrogen levels shoot up, and then you get what's called gyno, right, which is like that little bump in your in your nipples, like the man boobs. Yeah, and so, <clears throat> and that's that like the, one of the main things that Greg is like after. You know, that's one of the signs. Uh, okay, but it's from that I've experience. Never noticed that. Well, that's great. But I don't <laughs> constantly look at your nipples. <laughs> You're not always looking at However, my nipples. However, <laughs> I haven't noticed it, bro. Just so you'll know, I don't even know what that is. I'll show you after the. Okay, after you're done. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Uh, I I even went into the doctor. I was like, "What is this?" Wow. Yeah. Really. Yeah. What and did they say? Did they know right yeah, away? Yeah, they knew. Yeah, they were like, "This is glenoclamasty or whatever it's called." Mm. So long story short, like, I came off of it and I was like devastated, right? And I'm like, I'm never taking anything ever again, uh, and I haven't. But the issue remains. Like, I still have, I still have that. Like okay. You have to have surgery okay. to get it removed, and like so a lot you of think people if have, he sees it, he'll be like, "Oh, this oh, is yeah, yeah, pure that's a, evidence." Yeah, telltale sign, right? Yeah, got it. 
So I'll defend well, you. Well, well, I appreciate to it. Coach Greg. But I mean, it's kind of it's true and it's not. So I'm not a lifetime natural, okay. but I'm natural. Yes. Yeah. So, bro, can I talk about counting macros? Yeah, yeah. Or, or calorie, you know, yeah, calories and things it. like that. Because the thing is, is like, um, when I got like the more shredded than I've ever been before in my life, uh, it came as a result of weighing every single meal, logging every single calorie, and truly considering uh, day in and day out for almost six months what I was putting into my body, how often I was doing cardio, and how hard I was training. Because you can't lie to yourself no. on the RPE. No. It's like, are you training well, hard? I'm, Anyways, you're the expert on well, this. Well, but. no, I mean, you know your way around it, too. Like I said, you, when you got into it, you dove into it. Hard. And I learned a lot of stuff from you during that time, like, especially the meals. And you know, you know, when you're on a cut, you, like, you need volume. And you yes. need, like, satiating foods. Yes. So you feel full. And I think you did a great job of like making meals that did that. And so I stole them all from you Bro, and now they're in my program. Hey, they're yours, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know who I stole them from. I remember looking at the satiation index. Have you ever looked at that before? Yes. So that right there is a pretty good tool. Yeah. Uh, the satiation index. Well, we can and give that to people. I don't yeah. know. That might be too complicated. It might be too complicated, them, but. but essentially, you know, what is the satiation index? How full certain foods make you feel? Exactly. Is that yeah. what it means? More or less. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you can look at you can look at that index and then you can start to use that index to make meals that are high volume, low calorie, super satiating yeah. so that when you are hungry, you just create a meal that sounds good to you that's going to make you feel full. That's awesome. That's so helpful. That's what I did. Well, that's well, that's what I did because you did it. <laughs> and it was really What, what meal did I tell you I about think, that you love? I loved? think you know the turkey rice salsa. Oh. Bro, like that, that's, that, that's like meal. one of the best post-workout meals. It's so satisfying. It really is. Yeah. It really is. That salsa, it just hits. Because and you know how you're like super gets... hungry after a workout? Oh, And that man. salsa, it's so good. Do you remember certain workouts, man? Like my hands would be shaking because I'm just like, I needed something. Yep. And I think it was super helpful. You told me about the gummy bears. Oh, yeah, the gummy you know, bears, the intra, yeah. Sour Patch Kids, gummy bears. Anything like that. Like, just quick, like, carbs. Orange rings. Yeah. If you like those. Well, you those. did a lot of that with your marathon training, right? Like, oh, big time. And you got to do that during the workout, like, like during the while workout. you're running. Like, Absolutely. you don't get to stop running. Mm -hmm. You're running and taking. Just What, do you have, like, a in. utility belt? Like, what yeah. do you do? Yeah. Like, how do you take that much stuff with you when you're running? For how many <laughs> yeah. miles did you run? Yeah, I, I did a full marathon, 26.2. So, yeah. you, you do have a belt. Um, I can't remember the exact brand that I used, but it had two. Uh, water bottles as well as a um, uh, just kind of a little pocket uh, there in the front which I didn't use for my marathon because they told me oh there's going to be plenty of stuff and turned out to not be uh, as true as I needed it to be in the middle of the workout. <laughs> so what did you do? You didn't have your belt. Uh, yeah I stuffed my pockets uh, full of um, so what I used for the marathon was actually cliff bo blocks okay like they're kind of they're kind of like gummy bears but I think they have some additional carbs and maybe mm. even a little bit of caffeine okay so I stuffed my pockets uh, full of those but for the runners that are watching uh, Martin or Martine I, can, I don't know how you say it Martin best stuff that really? was the best stuff uh, but it got to a point where it was yeah it was it was rough because I didn't have all my stuff but during my training, gummy bears. What's what's your favorite part about marathon running? And then what's the what's your favorite part about like bodybuilding? Because you kind of I don't know if I call it bodybuilding. You, would you yeah. call it bodybuilding? But yeah, that style. For sure. So like, what what do you like from each of those? Or like, what did you not like from each of those? Yeah, I got really into marathon um, running because of my dad. And so one of the things really? about yeah. working out in general is like building relationship with other athletes. I think I love that about both sports. Uh, with running is the, is like the alone time. You know, for me, I don't get a lot of time to just think. And for me, running creates space for me to think, creates space for me to pray, creates space for me to make decisions, get creative. Um, I actually took a course, I think it was from UC Berkeley, on learning how to learn. And they said that one of the best ways to get creative ideas is to walk, like list cardio, uh, yeah. low intensity, steady state or yeah. doing runs. And so for me, that's what I love about running. Like I was, I never ran fast. I just, I just ran long distance and I, yeah. I enjoyed that. I more so consider myself to be 
like an endurance athlete. Now, I don't want to do like 50 milers at this point. I mean, it sounds fun, but that sounds fun. It sounds fun to me. I mean, like the like when, when I was when I was younger, like when we were playing sports, like running was a form of punishment. You know, mm. like if you do something wrong, you had to run. And so I hated running. Do you still hate running? I hate running long distances. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy it, man. It's super fun. And but our, what but what is it about the that alone time that just so hard? I just like doing hard stuff. Like I remember on my uh, on my marathon day. Uh, my hamstrings locked up at mile 19, which was really unfortunate because I had COVID the week that I ran the marathon, oh, no. which really sucked yeah. because I was super dehydrated. Um, I tried everything that I could to get hydrated prior to the race, drank a ton of like Gator Light and you know, all that stuff. And uh, But I, my hamstrings locked up at mile 19. And I remember at mile 22, you know that feeling when you're about to cry and you just sort of spontaneously do like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did that <laughs> out of nowhere. It yeah. just, it wasn't like I, I, I didn't know it was invol- on its way. It just, it just yeah. <gasps> And I just realized like, oh my God, like I, I was, it was like, it was like something was working itself out. See, this does, it sounds like torture to me. <laughs> this does not sound fun to me. Dude, I was so angry. So one of the things like my counselor told me is that I needed to get more in touch with my anger and yeah. so on the run i gave myself permission to process some anger which is another great thing about like endurance athletics yeah. i think and when i got to the finish line my dad ran my first marathon with me he beat me by the way and he's 57 oh my God. so i was my first marathon i think it was his fourth or fifth and he met me at the finish line and i'd been processing this anger for the last six and a half miles of the race yeah and was so sad that I felt like I was underperforming and it went through my mind like I'm letting him down. Yeah, your and dad's there. Yeah, yeah. My dad's there and I'm letting him down. It's like I was a kid again. And I got to the finish line and, and uh, you know, he, he, there's a line there, bro, that you're not allowed to cross like as a spectator. And once you finish, you can't cross that line. Well, my, my dad saw me and he just ran through that line. Didn't care. And he didn't care. He just ran through the line and he just grabbed hold of me and, and, he just grabbed me. He's like, I'm so proud of you. And I just broke down and started wow. crying. Yeah. And I was like, I'm, I'm so mad, Dad. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, no, you did a good job. Wow. You know, so it's like a super emotional moment, you know, finishing a marathon. But, yeah, yeah I mean, for me, like, that, that, those are some of the things I, I like about running. And, I mean, with bodybuilding, it's just, it's the, uh, it's the detail work, man. I mean, it's, it's it really ridiculous. is a detail work. That's really a great way to say it. Yeah. It? People don't, people don't understand. They don't, they don't, they just think it's sort of holistically working out like a run, but it's so different because you're targeting different muscle groups. Yeah. And like, if you want to nerd out on athletics, you want to be a bodybuilder because it just does it for you. All the nuances and like, oh, I need to bring this muscle group up or I'd like to get stronger here in my calves or I want to look better in my biceps or whatever it might be. And that for me, super fascinating. Because you take not only your body on as a project, but you take individual muscle groups on as a project. And yeah. everything that you do, how you live your life, how you eat your food, how you sleep at night, you know, all these things go into sculpting, you know, a great physique. Yeah. It's like you 24-7, you're thinking about everything that you're doing is considering the outcome. Yes. You know, like what your goal is. And that's what it takes to get shredded. And that's and that's what, what it takes to get, get six pack abs. <laughs> <laughs> and not uh, uh, P ninety X or exactly or insanity or none insanity of that stuff. or seventy five hard. None of that stuff. None of that stuff. Seventy five hard. Why is it called seventy five hard? No, like bro. The worst name I've ever. It's heard. the name of it. You know what's worse? You know what's a worse name than seventy five hard? Tell me. So I had a brand reach out to me, and I'm gonna put them on blast right now because I, I have to. They re- to. this brand reached out to me. It's a clothing brand, like gym clothing brand. Okay. And the name of the of the brand is Meat, <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> which is all right. I'm already like, why is your is it an acronym? I it could. I mean, <laughs> either way, like regardless of like whether it's an acronym or not, like Meat is not. <laughs> no. The thing was like that was bad enough, but like put it on. Look at their apparel, and it's like right on your shirt, big letters Meat. meat. In like a low we have hand. the meats. We have the meats. <laughs> we probably can't say that. I don't know. We, I'm gonna put the sound in. Right no, in. I almost put it in the board earlier. Arby's, we have the meats. Uh, but like, 
a low, very low cut, like <laughs> stringer, and it just says m- meat on it. I'm like, I am not going to wear that. I'm not going to wear that ever. But I'm certainly not going to no. wear that to the gym, like in public, right? Because we're, we're both kind of particular about what we wear. Absolutely. And, and I've, a lot of like my fashion sense or whatever you want to call it. Sure. Intuition is like a, a, a product of watching you. No. Cause you, yeah, because you. No, don't you're like say the that, style, bro. He's like one of the style. You're like one of the. You're like one of the, like true. Bro, that's like, kind. Style I don't gurus. Know. No, I don't I think call so. You a guru. <laughs> <laughs> you're, I don't think so. You can't say guru if you're pastor. I guess. No, I think you can. Honestly, that comes from my pops too. Man, he used to iron creases into my shorts in kindergarten. Really? Yep. He taught like, me how to look iron. Good. You're gonna look great. This is how you. This is how you handle yourself. Yeah, uh, you know, he didn't necessarily say you got to dress exactly like this per se, yeah. but we're not going to wear a, a, a wrinkled shirt to, no, to school at, no chance. at whatever age. It doesn't matter. No chance. And I, I value that. I love that. Yeah. Because I'm like, yourself. I can't. Yeah. Don't wear if you're going to go somewhere. Yep. Have like enough self-respect to iron your shirt or like not have a ton of wrinkles in your shirt. And look Absolutely. Like a, Absolutely. A and I talk to pastors all the time about fashion. Really? If I could tell you how many. Um, oh, because you're the guru, bro. Yeah, no, I don't think <laughs> that's, that's why the case. But mean, they do send me a whole lot of selfies in dressing room mirrors. They're like, "Should I buy this?" And and that's that's this? not the right question no, for it's anybody, not, is it? No, no. It's like, how do you feel in it? Exactly. Do you feel cool? Do you feel confident? Do you do you feel like you look good? Because that's half the battle, right exactly, there. There's a yeah. big difference in style and fashion, and we don't have to get into that. You know, there's there's people with a lot of confidence there at the gym, like probably too much confidence. Yeah, if, if we're being honest. Mm-hmm. But meat, yeah, meat wearing meat stringers <laughs> that is, takes a lot of confidence. Um, <laughs> wearing stringers like the, in general just takes wearing a lot stringers, of confidence. Yeah, I cannot bro. do that, dude. Well, you want to know what I tell pastors when they ask me, like, yeah, hey, how should I upgrade my dress? Get fit because Get fit. being fit is actually the best thing you can do for your wardrobe. You know, even if you don't have the most expensive clothes, yeah, if they can fit you well good. and you look good and healthy. Yeah. You look a lot better. There you go. Yeah. But can we can we talk about this? Because sure, everybody's wearing mids. Every single person is wearing mids. Mm, and I that's interesting. I don't think that they know that like mids, Jordan one mids. Mids are not it. Yeah. Yeah. You can't wear the mids. No. Nah. The mids They're, are mid. But also like if you're wearing like <laughs> if you're wearing like the off white Jordan ones or like Dior to the gym we know like i don't i don't care how confident you are we know yep. like we know those we know. are fake shoes like those, those, are fakes. those are not real shoes for sure they're reps yeah they're reps yeah. so you're not fooling anyone yeah That's if what you're wearing say. 5k no. shoes to the gym yeah. why don't you have a home gym exactly you, <laughs> why are you, you not should not be here at planet <laughs> fitness <laughs> you should not be wearing your dior's at planet fitness like we we know all right i got some other i got some things i made like a program because the, the last episode was just like we just yep which was fine. It was so much fun. But there fun. are a few things I that it. I want to get to. And I actually I think we've actually Katie, gotten to like, most of them. Just answering honestly everything. She's so honest. Like right? super quick, super direct, super dry. Like it is yeah. what it is, dude. She's so funny. I know. Hilarious. And, you know, I th- I thought I was funny. And I do it think was I'm funny, funny. But you are she's, funny, on a, she's on another level. Our sure. wives are not aware of how funny we are. No, nah, they're not. You they're know? not. And they spend time together. You think they would <laughs> they talk they'd about talk it and about they would know that we're funny, but they don't. Okay, I got a question for you. Um, two questions for you, actually. So what's the worst workout experience you've ever had? The worst workout experience that I've ever had. Oh, that's a great question. I went to Zumba once. You went to Zumba? Yeah. Is that is that what it's called? That's what it's called. Zumba. Yeah. I went to Zumba. Zumba. And it was the worst slash kind of the best you know because it made for a great story yeah but i went to this community center and they were doing these zumba nights and it was like five dollars and the reason why it was the you best paid because, five dollars to do zumba oh yeah they were hype bro. really i mean it was all like rap music and people were getting after it this was like just a few years ago look it up bro they do it at different community centers here in nashville and i went with a friend because they invited me to go there's like a bunch of twerking and like i didn't twerk you didn't twerk okay i didn't twerk i just kind of like did the dances and stuff and like i just it's a terrible workout i don't yeah i mean for me it was a terrible workout for me uh my heart rate probably never got past like zone two i i pushed uh, but i don't even know if i sweat and it 
was like 45 minutes long and probably yeah. a waste of seven bucks. Yeah, but probably. I made a memory with a friend and I got to yeah, be well, a part of something that was like, you know, they're having fun. So priceless. 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 It was worth the seven bucks, <laughs> I guess. $7. Yeah. I mean, just like real quick, just let's just talk about like what you're in a unique position as a pastor and you're in, into fitness. Like, oh, yeah. How's that? What's that dynamic like? Yeah, sometimes people get because, salty about me posting about fitness. Really? Why oh, do yeah. they? But why do they get salty? What's the salt well? About? You remember when we were doing recovery Sundays? Yes. And so uh, recovery Sundays, we would like get a huge like tub and just dump a bunch of ice and water in it yes. and just do an ice bath. Yeah. Recovery Sunday. We and gotta I, bring that back. It's summer. We, we need to bring. We that gotta bring back, that back. Honestly. We should do a video about that. But it is weird uh, in regards to being a pastor and being in fitness. There's only so much like you can post. There's only so much you can say. Um, I don't know why, but people just get upset with you when you post things about fitness. I guess because they think you're shaming them for not being fit. I don't know. Or right, because you you just kind of have a, a little bit more authority to to them. And there is that what I don't it know. Is? I, I think that maybe they look at you working out and being fit and they think that because you're a spiritual leader that you're suggesting that if you were ever to really be as spiritual as me you would have to be in shape yeah like me sure which is not not what you're saying no not at all because i think you should be as fit as your purpose requires that's what i believe about fitness is what to say that again yeah you should be as fit as your purpose requires yeah that's what what i believe about fitness what does that mean so so like my purpose is to preach the gospel until I'm 90. That's what I believe about me. And so yeah. I need to be fit enough to carry that assignment out. That's my you know, opinion on what I do. And so I want to be that fit. I want to work out enough. I want to strength train enough. I want to do enough cardio. I want to eat healthy enough yeah. so that I can live a life, um, some longevity, so I can longevity. do what I feel called to do up into my you're going to be able to do what you feel like you're supposed to do longer exactly yeah that's what i feel like my purpose is so i need to be fit enough to carry that out so um i think anything beyond that is a hobby i guess i mean what does the bible say about it Mm -hmm. you know like gluttony is a sin yeah right yeah in the bible so you know if you're i i don't know yeah i don't know what the implication of that is but like yeah. The Bible says it, so yeah. I don't know how to interpret that. But yeah, slothfulness. Yeah. Read the Proverbs. Yeah. Laziness. Uh, just consistently putting your hand to your mouth. Uh, you know, eating, not working, uh, being a sluggard. Like Proverbs is very clear. That's unwise and uh, immature. And then also you have the um, you have the one quote from Paul that everybody likes to bring up: uh, "Bodily exercise profiteth uh, little." Uh, King James version there. Um, bodily exercise profiteth little yeah 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 so they use that as an excuse not to work out hey even if it profits me just a little i'd still like to have that but didn't he also say like run the race he did and 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 he talked about boxing as a fighter yeah exactly yeah so he's using a- athletic analogies yeah so he was so, familiar with uh, the grecian yeah so uh, how do people reconcile that athletics it's easy i guess if it, yeah. if if you read the bible and you and you determine from that that you don't have to do anything yeah, that is an interesting then that's, take. That's easier. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, most people don't read the Bible, but if they did, you know, I could imagine that would be possible for them to... To think that. Yeah, to think, yeah. oh, it's not a really a big deal. God doesn't care about it. And yet well, he I, says we are a temple, right, that belongs to him. Temple. So we yeah. should steward our bodies in such a way that brings glory and honor to him. So I couldn't think of a better way than, uh, you know, eating healthily and uh, working taking, out consistently. It's like literally just taking care of the temple. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's my perspective. That's my opinion. I'm obviously pro fitness, pro working out, pro eating yeah. healthy, all those things. As we all, I could do a better job at that. Um, but you know, progress, not yeah. perfection. Progress over perfection, dude. We keep. I feel like we could just keep going. That's good times. Yeah, maybe we do another one. Yeah, let's hit the button again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I like the idea of doing a an ice bath podcast that would be fun i'm not i'm a little scared i just bought these microphones and they're not cheap so maybe we we'll just use just different microphones nah, we'll use these you think so it'll be fine we could do like yeah. an arm yeah we'll just have like our wives hold them over <laughs> us while we sit in ice baths uh, they'd probably make a lot of comments yeah they would definitely like, and in in fact like those would be in. entertaining comments so i think it might be worth i think for this sure. is just a more reason for us to do this all right all right coming soon we'll be in an ice bath 
Ice Bath Podcast with our wives. Ice Bath Podcast Perfect <laughs> Edition. <laughs> Coming soon. Well, man, thank you. Sounds amazing. This was fun. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, of course. This is a podcast for people who do gym stuff and others do.